Hello and thank you for keeping us company. This is Why in the Morning, Why 2 by 4 is the station. My name is Dereva Hillary. A very good Monday morning to you. We are talking about the food security. I'm joined by Beatrice Cairo. She's a health economist. And Job Mugira is a research economist. Welcome so much. As we talk about this, let's get to know where we are as a nation, where we are headed to. Last week, we had the uh, Cabinet Secretary or Treasury Ambassador Kuria Tan say the, uh, the agricultural, forestry and fishing sector grew by 3.6% in 2019 from 6.0% in 2018, which is a deceleration and of course it's attributed by the extreme weather phenomenon we experienced last year. Uh, you remember the, almost the first half of the year was uh, uh, graced by long drought where people died because of uh, hunger and later we experienced floods like we are right now and 2020 is no different from 2019 uh, we have a calamity that we are fighting right now we have the floods that already has uh, uh, rendered uh, thousands of people homeless uh, food crops in our shambas have been destroyed by the rains and remember the first months of uh, 2020 we experienced the invasion of desert locust Therefore, we are really affected so much in this. And of course, we are still fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. The economic uh, or the economy of our country is in a bad state. But we want to see where we are as a nation. And to speak of which, we will be looking at a few areas. The taxes on the farmers and the uh, farm produce. Are we in a position as a country to produce enough for our people and even maybe to support other nations? And what can be done to support our subsistence farmers and uh, why should we keep on importing foods uh, that we are uh, growing here in our country send us your comments or reactions to all our social media platforms at y254 channel my handle is at morani hillary welcome to the broadcast good morning good morning. ladies and gentlemen good morning hillary. karibuni sana now uh we are around the 15th of uh, covid 19 let me begin with you, Beatrice. Mm -hmm. how, how have you been coping with the situation? <laughs> uh, I think for me, it's um, still, uh, I will not say usual, because there are so many amenities that, uh, services that have gone down. Mm -hmm. So some of us, we love uh, hanging out in joints, restaurants. Now mm -hmm. we cannot hang out anymore. Mm -hmm. You have to s stick in your house. Uh, and for basically people who are extroverts, it's becoming quite difficult mm, yeah, because um, maybe we love sightseeing, mm -hmm. traveling from one point to another. Uh, now people are being forced to confine. Mm -hmm. uh, but also in terms of uh, healthcare and other aspects such as uh, businesses, uh, they're quite being affected in one way or another. People losing jobs, it's, it's stressful. And uh, even people now actually having uh, to feed, feed themselves. Have, you know, 50 days and you're a daily wage earner mm -hmm. and you're not earning that daily wage. It's really affecting uh, uh, people uh, in, in households. Just like recently, the way we saw uh, what's, uh, a lady in Kisauni, Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a lady in Kisauni who was boiling stones, stones for, kids, for yeah. her children because her daily wage has already been, been cut short. Mm -hmm. So obviously such a, an individual already mm -hmm. is at risk. True. Even uh, when you're saying we are preventing COVID, but now it's such a, a mother, even food, hunger in itself, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's actually going to affect their immunity, even on, in a way of, of their bodies fighting uh, the, the, the COVID itself. So okay. basically it's affecting many people in one way or another, but th I think the most uh, affected persons are those who are daily, daily, daily wage earners. Those ones are the most, most, most hit hard okay. and small scale businesses definitely. All yeah. right. Yeah. Now Job, it, it has been um, a week since I asked you the same question. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether you have changed the tactics or uh, things are still normal for you. Of course, uh, Hillary, because of hope, I've been changing the tactics. I'm hopeful <laughs> that we, we will overcome. Mm -hmm. But uh, the f over 50 days have not been easy. What disadvantage of uh, being a researcher, mm -hmm. there's something we call hypothesis. You mm -hmm. walk forming them. You find yourself in a situation, you form a hypothesis. Mm -hmm. So since COVID began, mm -hmm. 
have been forming so many hypotheses, and one of it is in fact what we are discussing today about food security. And I strongly feel if uh, we were food secure as a nation, by now we could have knocked out COVID. Yeah, we will discuss further how we could have done it if we were food secure. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, speaking of uh, food security, it's one of the big four agenda. And uh, just even before we get to the food security, the economy of our country has been greatly affected. Are we looming at a economic shock as a nation after and even during this uh, COVID-19, Beatrice? Definitely. We're going we're gonna to be hit very hard. Uh, because look at the policies that have been, been imposed. Mm -hmm. We are quarantining people who we are not even sure that they are actually having COVID itself. Mm -hmm. So if that's a person who is earning a salary or they are going reporting to work mm -hmm. somewhere, already that person, they are, you've put them on a sick roll. There's, there's, there's that term we call a sick roll. That person is already on a sick roll. That means if that person is a breadwinner, what happens? It has already affected the, the economic aspect. But further to that, uh, systems now have to readjust. What you are doing, uh, where people are reporting to work, now maybe we may shift to online. That means some jobs will be termed redundant, right? True. So the moment those jobs are termed redundant, where do those people go? Uh, people without skills in terms of technology and, dig and digitalization, what happens to such individuals? They'll be forced to go back either to school or, I don't know, because at the end of the day, they'll, be, they'll, they'll have to readjust. People have to start readjusting. Because okay. now uh, I, I have seen uh, people, um, what is it called, uh, going, going from the office not to the home. So what will happen is that uh, even the rent in, in, of these offices in towns, what happens to the landlords? People might convert them to, to be studios for people to live in. Because yeah, it's uh, evident, people can yeah, work from home. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So those offices will be left empty, right? Mm -hmm. uh, look at the malls that, that, that were established uh, with office spaces. What happens? Mm -hmm. People are taking their office furniture back home. Because uh, now that we are going uh, online and uh, we are going to go d uh, digitalized, mm -hmm. definitely now we are going to reduce to uh, we, people have people are reducing uh, what is it called? People are reducing the, even the expenditure right now, mm -hmm. uh, owing that the people are projecting that COVID uh, will extend maybe to September or the end of the year. Uh, there was some data that was showing maybe for the whole world to say that they are COVID free. Yeah, it might extend all the way to December. And okay. to some other news, they are saying uh, maybe even a year from now, we are still going to be suspicious still about the COVID, the right? COVID, yeah. So what will happen is that um, many businesses will have to readjust and they'll have to cut uh, their, their, their employees, right? Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to spend where you're not sure about the economic stability. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other end, there are people who are going to benefit from it, right? Of In course. every crisis, there are always, uh, <laughs> <Someone> <laughs> there always benefactors, right? Yeah, there's always someone that is going to benefit, right? Mm -hmm. So businesses are cropping up, like now the masks, we've seen people creating uh, cloth masks. Uh, the, it may not be super effective uh, in terms of uh, preventing uh, transmission of the infection, but uh, that mama yeah, mboga yeah, yeah. maybe shifted from selling mbogas and now has shifted to, mm -hmm. to selling of masks, which is still gen generating income. True, true. So sanitizers and other products of, uh, uh, for re re reduction of the spread of the infection, mm -hmm. when you think about it, it has opened business avenues for other people. Actually, I want, uh, since we are talking about food security, uh, okay. remember there is this gen uh, concept of uh, people boosting the immunity. And uh, lemons, uh, you've seen uh, ar around social media, people are talking about take your lemons, take mm -hmm. your oranges. Mm -hmm. So the fruit business, when you think about it, a farmer who had uh, lemons already in his shamba, they, <laughs> they, have, they have really benefited, right? Mm -hmm. They have really benefited. And anybody selling oranges and those citrus kind of foods, because now people have become health conscious now, because people are also eating at home. So they're not eating at restaurants. So what will happen? The 
uh, the farmer, mm -hmm. <laughs> most likely his job is not <laughs> redundant because we all depend on food to boost our immunity in one way or another. So I'm, I'm suspecting yeah. after this, someone will go to Moduru and get those fruits to sell in the evening <laughs> to, <laughs> to people going back home. But uh, l l l let me uh, come to you with a different uh, angle in this. We have been uh, greatly affected in terms of uh, food security. Right from last year, we had complaints even from uh, cash crop uh, farmers like the tea and coffee. But now even the food, uh, the food uh, stuff like the maize, these people have been uh, affected in terms of their pay. They have produced maize. Uh, there are claims the NCPB is not buying from them. We have uh, small-scale farmers who, who just sell their maize to anyone who will come along. And uh, we got to a point even of importing maize to support our people when we were hit by hunger. This year, we had the locust invasion. At this point, do, do, do you think as a nation, we have policies to protect our farmers? Uh, not at all, Hilary. About policies, we have them. But now from a policy perspective, what's the role of a policy or what are the stages of coming up with a policy? Once you write it and place it on the shelves, it's just like a newspaper now, and I say man, you nyama. Pi your policy in Ezra to work for your cases in Guinea at our school, you go funga nyama. But once you fail to implement a policy, in fact, that's corruption in itself because you spent resources coming up with a policy. People went to Naivasha to sit down and uh, formulate the policies. Then you come and place it on the shelves. The policies in the Ministry of Agriculture and the CS knows. In fact, he was discussing these things not, not long ago from now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will tell you, whatever is in their website are like uh, over 20 policies on various sectors mm -hmm. of the agricultural sector. But what is the implementation? My mother dropped out of school in Form 2 mm -hmm. some years back because the coffee sector that had helped her join high school started collapsing. Nowadays in my village in Meru somewhere, mm -hmm. you cannot put your hope on coffee because the policies that once used to make coffee a booming agricultural sector mm -hmm. now seem not to exist any longer. What happened? Is there any research that was done and said that coffee is not safe for human consumption? Mm -hmm. So that now we reduce coffee production. People are being bored daily. Kazi ya kuhasol pia imezidi. Mm -hmm. So I, I presume intake of coffee should even be going high because guys are not sleeping trying to hustle. Mm -hmm. Then these and policies, it's cold. Yeah, and even <laughs> it's cold. Kwanza ima na na quarantine sa easy. But again now, how mm -hmm. comes that to import our coffee? Mm -hmm. to, to end the pale meru to produce kahawa, to let the mahali Nairobi apa, ukora ukora kidogo it happen. Mm -hmm. And these policies do not protect us. Mm -hmm. We saw the tea regulations, uh, I think uh, two weeks ago. And some people celebrated, but they were celebrating because something in the tea sector is being done. Had they read those uh, regulations, they should go and read. I will, no one will read for them. The tea farmers should go and read. But about policies, they are there, but some of them are not well researched. Mm -hmm. Because in Kenya, and what is ailing us, one thing we have to admit is uh, we cannot blame the CS. You know, I never blame the government because I told you mm -hmm. that there are several times that you have met. The government is my mother, my father, my sister, my brother. Those people who work in government, government mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. it's our neighbors, our fathers, our mothers, and all those. So that's why I don't blame the, 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 the condemnation. Like, uh, how and most likely what? people who come from the same, same regions. Exactly. Now, these are the guys who know, who researched outside. Wakajua mm -hmm. coffee, eat tea, mm -hmm. this maize, if we don't do it this way, mm -hmm. the way it's being done in Kenya, we do it the way it's being done maybe in another funny country, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then it will bring money to us without any care for the local okay. farmer. True. So our policies have failed to protect the farmers mm -hmm. about us producing food. We have enough land. I don't mm -hmm. know whether we used to say it's 584,000 square kilometers of Kenyan land, mm -hmm. which, which is very fertile. God has blessed us. Mm -hmm. But you are suffering from the so-called natural resource curse, mm -hmm. where you are bestowed with so many natural resources, mm -hmm. but the output from them mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. zero. So it's not a matter of uh, we are lacking anything. Mm -hmm. We have everything. But now, 
people working in the Ministry of Agriculture, we, I, don't, I don't want to blame them at this point. Let them just understand, including the CS, that mm -hmm. at this point, they have found the ministry the way it is. But these are the cries of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. So this is the time we cannot continue doing things the way we've been doing or propagate what we found there. Let's start a new way of doing things. Watch animalize kwa kuuliza corona tuseme sasa hizi itaisha june as our friend has told us or she is suggesting mm -hmm. and that's our hope hata ishe leo kesho turudi ku hustle mm -hmm. now hii corona ikiisha leo tutakuwa tumeipiga na 50 something days eh ikirudi next year at time like april we get another case mm -hmm. the world is declared corona free and then in 2021, God forbid, March again, March 12th, mm -hmm. we report another case. Will we take another 50 something days to fight the same thing? Mm -hmm. What will be our lessons? Will, we, will everybody fear a lockdown because they don't know what they will eat tomorrow? Mm -hmm. And if we had food, my friend, hakuna mtu angogopa lockdown. Tungesema tufungiwe, tukule chapo, tukule ugali, sarigali kiwi natupatia. Tukule mahindi, tuchemusha. 21 days tutoke kama tume add weight kidogo na corona imeisha <laughs> but size ukifungua utakula nini <laughs> alright yeah I, I, actually he has said something i wanted to ask you mm -hmm. if we went on lockdown yes would we be in a position to feed our own people and if not mm -hmm. then why are we as a nation not in a position to produce enough for our people mm -hmm. and maybe to support others who may be dying of hunger is it our policies or is it that we have poor knowledge of farming, mm -hmm. what's, the, what's our problem? Okay, first, we need to understand what is food security. Mm. You, you know, it's a terminology the president just gave. Uh, one of my f big four agendas is food security, mm -hmm. health, uh, uh, universal health coverage, uh, housing for everybody. But what is really food security? When, when you talk about food security, it means each and every citizen in that country mm -hmm. can be able to access food not just any food, because you can't eat ugali, 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 ugali every day. So you need access of food, that's one. Two, nutritious food. So it, 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 it is food, yes, but it should be nutritious. Mm -hmm. And when it's nutritious, what does it do? It, it, boosts your you, you, it boosts your health. That means you live a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at places like Wajir, Moyale, that were really hit catastrophically by drought and, and, and other disasters, and even in Trukana, you'll find malnutrition is very common in those, in, in those regions, right? Because maybe they're only drinking porridge, but they need their proteins, they need their vitamins, they need their vegetables. So if this... Uh, if, food if, if the citizens of that country cannot access a balanced diet, that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. If they cannot access a balanced diet where they can access their proteins, they can access their starch, they can ac ac access their vitamins. Mangoes can reach someone in Turkana. Oranges can reach someone in Kisumu that are not uh, producing oranges. Mm -hmm. Then we cannot say we, ha we are food secure. Sure. Okay, so first we need to understand what is food security before we even create even policies mm -hmm. of ensuring there is actual food security. What what are you? Because when the government says they has reserves for maize, but a human being cannot eat maize from January to December. It it needs to say when you have food reserves, I can get an egg, mm -hmm. you know, I can get meat. Right, I can get skumawiki, I can get popos. That's what we are talking about, right? So until we first address that issue of food security first, and 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 government officials understanding what is what is it about uh, when we say food security, what are we talking about? That that is one aspect. Number two, so that in the case of a lockdown. The gov can the government be able to distribute food that is nutritious to each and every household, the 47 million Kenyans in the country? Can it? Now, uh, when we make policies, it's at two levels. There's the macro level and there's the micro level. Mm -hmm. The macro level is on the national, uh, nas national level. In the national level, we are saying that when the government looks at its reserves, it can be able to distribute food to all its 47 million Kenya, irrespective of your status, whether you are rich or poor, it can be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Countries like in the UK, you find they have food reserves that can go up to three years even if they're not producing any food. They have reserves to the point, if the worst of the worst happens, they can actually feed their society for up to three years without any, 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 any food production. Now, 
come back home. Right now, even our nas national serial boards, they're saying, <laughs> there is no mahindi. Hakuna mahindi. Because, because, because. They have to import more. Yeah, they have to import. When, when, when it happens it, often. Exactly. But what hurts <laughs> me most is for a mother in Kisauni mm -hmm. to boil stones mm -hmm. to feed her children. That already tells, that already expo exposes us bare. Be very, very bare. Mm -hmm. Right? That tells you uh, how many other people, that is only one case that <coughs> I speak to, how many other cases mm -hmm. are like that? Countrywide, even in the rural areas, there are people we may think they're rural areas they have food, yeah. but in actual sense, they're actually sleeping hungry. Before yeah. even we talk about lockdown in the cities, mm -hmm. all right. So once we understand uh, the, the macro, macro macro level, what policies, uh, and I'll, I'll agree with uh, with my friend Job. Mm -hmm. We make policies not from an in, an informed point of view. An informed point of view means you've done a research, mm -hmm. you have studied your people, you have studied the weather patterns, and, and you sit down and come up with a policy that will cushion you. Mm -hmm. So day in, day out, Trukana is hit by a drought. Then we ask for a fund drive. Mm -hmm. as, if all those, uh, yeah, yeah, as if all those years, we have never sat down and asked ourselves, for how long mm -hmm. can this continue? Mm -hmm. Right? For how long can this continue? So already right now, there would have already been policies of uh, st storing reserves to how many years? Food reserves, how many years should we ensure that we have food reserves? If it's the natural cereal board, do we have maize that can feed a country for the next five years? That's what we should be asking ourselves. You know, those are the kind of policies that we no, should... In Kenya, let yeah. them even begin uh, a policy for two months. That when the rains are on setting in Trukana... Yes. Mm -hmm. Whether Manakopala and Atwambia Leo Manyunyu na Rasha Rasha, mm. the day he announces that there is expected uh, floods in Trukana yes. for two months, mm. what were Pangwe na Chakula were the wet areas yes. so that now the floods will come and pass. We feed those people for two months only or even one month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, do we. Do we have such a policy? So is it our farmers who are not growing maize or the food stuff you want or what happens? Do they farm? The farmers are doing their work, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you see now there are so many discouragements about continuing being a farmer. Like uh, in Kenya, and it's very sad, and, and we have to form a culture of resigning. When serious complaints are brought mm -hmm. and you're the person in charge mm -hmm. of this thing, there are two things. The president should fire you or voluntarily you resign. Why do we have a maze deficit and again people People I've seen with my eyes mm -hmm. are drawing their maize to cows somewhere in uh, Wasingishu County. And uh, Hillary, people will talk about uh, storage, Sijui, Zitapata, weevils and such. Mm -hmm. In this, you know the economy, as I like saying, it's always intertwined. In this country, there is a university I know that is offering a PhD in food, food I think food technology and post-harvest mm -hmm. studies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that university teach? Where do, do those PhD graduates, which uh, run into hundreds, where do they go? Mm -hmm. Why can they be positioned by the government in the Ministry of Agriculture to somewhere in the food baskets of Kitale and uh, Eldoret? That post-harvest technology that they have been taught at PhD level. You remember mm -hmm. in Corona we had a PhD in hand washing person in this country who came to show us how to wash hands. <laughs> Let us get those people in post-harvest technology. Mm -hmm. Why in the Eldoret? Why in the Kitale? Why in the Meru? They set base there. They show us how to preserve our food, and then he maneno ya kulia kila wakati tutaleta mahindi. As you finish, I'll. Discuss mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why we like importing. Yeah, true. Yeah. But, you were but, mentioning but, about but, the information yeah. uh, coming up with the policy on an informed basis. Yeah, very uninformed basis. But to touch on what you asked about, what are the major challenges that affect the agricultural sector? Mm -hmm. There are various uh, things. One is is low farm level production. Yeah, low farm level because we we have to ac accept Kenya. There is private ownership of land and. 
most of the agricultural production that happens within the country is from small scale farmers. So you have your Kakota acre of piece of land and you're growing your onions. Another one has a two acre piece of land somewhere. Yeah, but we also know there are those organizations that come together and they do large scale. So wheat production, maize production in large scale, as apart from also cash crop like tea and whatever. But most of the food production that we actually um, uh, receiving our marikiti, yeah, wakulima market, they are coming from small, small farmers with small pieces of land, yeah, fragmented piece of, pieces of land. But in terms of low level of production, what causes the low level of production? One, it's technology skills. Mm -hmm. Our farmers still depending on ho and jembe and panga. Mm -hmm. you, you know, in this day, Jenere, in this 21st century, are we still using jembe and, uh, you know, panga to still, for mass production, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, uh, do we have credit support for a farmer? I remember at some, uh, at some point I, I thought I could start a farming business, right? But then when you, in, when you realize the cost that will it cost you to maybe even to produce things like onions or produce things like even carrots, you need input in terms of money, right? So that, that you're able to buy the fertilizer, you're able to buy, uh, to pay the casual laborers, right? So if I was uh, a youth, I walk into a bank, can they believe in me and give me some credit support, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other one is, 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 is lack of situational, uh, institutional support. So various institutions, so you are there, you've produced your milk, for mm -hmm. example. Will your milk be bought? You've worked very hard as a farmer. You've farmed correct, you've done everything correct, but who buys your produce? Do you have institutional support? Mm -hmm. Or will it happen like in Rift Valley where farmers were just pouring milk? Or will it happen like in Baringo, when, ma when farmers produce a lot of tomatoes, mm -hmm. then it all decayed in their farms because nobody is buying. So farmers have really worked very hard, even using their own simple technologies, right? But we don't have people who can even do value addition to such kind of produce. For example, instead of making the farmer pour milk, can they be taught how to make, taught how to make cheese? And then we market our cheese and the farmer still makes money. If it's the tomatoes, can we can the tomatoes? Right? Mm -hmm. So it reached to a point even now when you're in Nairobi, you are buying one piece of tomato, one, one, one tomato for around 20 shillings, right? Mm -hmm. Then the other thing is, is, is poor, inf poor infrastructure. So the farmer has made its produce, but where are the roads? Inaccessible. Yeah, to remove the farm produce from the farm to reach okay. the end consumer, even if it's for export basis. Mm -hmm. So already uh, the, the transport costs, it's what makes food prices even go high up. So the, the way he's saying, if a research is done to show how much transport costs affects the price of food to go up, then the government can come in and maybe say, let's reduce fuel prices. That's how you make policies. For any farmer who is, who is farming farm produce, can we reduce fuel prices for such individuals? So that food can be easily be accessible for each individual in the country. Uh, then the other thing is usually, uh, just as you said, less access to credit. So if you are a farmer, can policies be put in place if you go to a bank, do I still pay interest rates as anybody else, right? Mm -hmm. So because at the end of the day, whether you are a king or you are a pauper, we all depend on the farmer for food. True. All of us experience hunger pangs, irrespective of our social status. So can policies be put in place to encourage people to actually adapt farming, True. for example? Okay. So if they reduce credit facilities for people who are engaging in farming business, what do you expect? People will go and farm. Mm -hmm. But now when you imagine the cost that you're going to incur, what, what happens? People will okay. want and wait for a, a, a blue collar job. And then last but not least is the high cost of the inputs. If policies are put in place, for example, and subsidies, government is able to give subsidies, for example, to the fertilizers, to the tractors that can farm the land, you, you know, you reduce mm -hmm. the, 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 the input cost on such, what happens? The cost of production goes down, and even the prices of food will go down, such that even that person who is earning 100 shillings a day is able to afford a decent meal on top of that table. But it's becoming very, very expensive. To eat healthily, someone actually challenged me and said, Beatrice, you know, eating healthily or in itself is expensive. <laughs> so it's even expensive. cheap to mm -hmm. eat unhealthily. Ukule chips, pale, uh, for 50 bob, you're good to go. But putting a decent, balanced diet meal on your table becomes a very, very expensive thing, which is bad because what happens is <coughs> when we eat the wrong diet, what happens? It starts affecting our... 
health institutions already because you're overworked and you know healthcare in itself is not a revenue generating uh, kind of business quote unquote right okay. so when you start overwhelming your healthcare facilities because you are not creating policies that c can allow production of nutritious food so that each and every individual each and every citizen can afford a, d a balanced debt on the table then we are doing uh, how we'll c I will call uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. It's like robbing yourself. You are putting here and also robbing yourself on the other end. True. At the end of the day, yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, Job, she has mentioned about the farm inputs and the, the, the lowering of cost. A few weeks ago, we saw the president uh, relieve some taxes to, to employees and uh, small scale uh, traders or entrepreneurs. But how about the farmer? Can we see our farmers uh, being uh, duty free on anything and taxation from anything that they produce and mm -hmm. see them what they have produced comes to the market and in fact even the buying of the or, or purchasing of the farm produce how they are bought now i think uh, the, the the biggest challenge we have with kenya is the uh, production cost is very high look here rice from pakistan mm -hmm. uh, i i cannot even imagine the distance from pakistan to nairobi and the distance from moya to nairobi how comes that rice from there is cheaper in Kenya than the one from where? Uh, then uh, when producing this rice in Moya, why does it become so expensive? To add to all the costs that Beatrice has mentioned, especially on transport. Like for example, uh, transporting a banana from a village in Meru to a place where it can be picked by parcel vehicles will cost you a distance of three kilometers, about one bunch of banana with a hundred pieces of bananas will cost you 150 shillings. Mm -hmm. That's an extra 1.5 shilling per banana. Now, if you place it on a tarmac, uh, then you pay 200 shillings for the same banana, a distance of 242 kilometers from Meru to Nairobi. Remember, the 200 shillings is to 42 kilometers because there is good road. Mm -hmm. But now from the village to the tarmac here, two or three kilometers, you're paying uh, 150 shillings. So that's the first point. Well, that whatever is making the cost of production go high. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, the, the transport, transport cost. So w w what would the, the government do about it? Now, you see, Kenya Maneno ni experiment. If we have to move forward as a country, mm -hmm. we need to experiment and we need to change so many things. Why should we have a Ministry of Agriculture and a Ministry of Roads? We have Kera, we have Kura, we have Kenha. Mm -hmm. Let, the, when maybe the president reorganizes his government or forms another government, let's have a Ministry for Agriculture and Rural Development so that the Minister for Agriculture will know I'm responsible for growing tomatoes and I'm still responsible for transporting these tomatoes mm -hmm. to the nearest market. But as long as the roads are to me achieve cost due in your MCA, in your MP, in your nani, the cost of production in terms of transport will go high. Cost of input, zero rating mm -hmm. of some products in terms of taxes. We have 16% uh, percent VAT mm -hmm. and uh, we have 14% VAT now after the, after the review, the amendments of the act. Mm -hmm. But now, Hillary, why do we tax farm inputs? We were talking about PPEs. Yes. Mm -hmm. These are protective gears mm -hmm. uh, to fight corona. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we feel the doctors and the nurses are on front line. So we want to zero rate the PPEs so that they buy them at a very cheap cost. Kitu ya shilingi ya moja watauzua 84 which is good, 16 bob in Yondolewa. Now, farmers, tunawadharau sana, wako front line pia. Uyu nasa akitoko hospitali. Akitoko hospitali. Atakula nini? Atakula yo PPE. That's zero rate, iso chemicals, buwana. Fertilizer should be zero rated. But we don't want to zero rate them because the government has no capacity to provide fertilizers. They want... Cartels mm -hmm. to import those fertilizers mm -hmm. and sell to farmers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just 
uh, find a farmer somewhere who had started very well. Mm. Uh, nyanya zimefika mahali, mm. but this person cannot afford mm. the pesticides and the insecticides mm -hmm. because they are very expensive. So a produce that would have earned maybe 50,000, it a chapa na wadudu, and the person earns a 30%. And now the biggest challenge we have, and why we are importing everything from toothpicks, <laughs> so, so let me give you a very practical and sad example. People think we are eating pineapples from Dika, Del Monte. They are very expensive. You can't buy. We are eating pineapples from Tanzania. No way. My eye, my eye, ilikuwa ya yellow to kiwa watoto. Squeezy, ni white. So you can't differentiate between the the egg white and the yolk, which used to be yellow. We are eating eggs from Uganda. Mm -hmm. I have nothing against Uganda. In East Africa, we have the free trade policies True. that allow us to, to, to do inter-country trade, which is very okay. And our economists in the Ministry of Agriculture know that. But now, how comes that Uganda is not importing eggs from us, we are importing from them? Kretia Maai kutoka Eugene 200. Ya kutoka Kenya ni 320, ama 300. Reason, you have the feeds, uh, chicken feeds, they are taxed. Let's it's by the size si kujichocha ukinipatia ministry ya agriculture size size kwanza hiyo shida ya kuimport mai sita import what will i do i'm not saying as a person but what as a country those who have positions at this particular time what they should do let them make it more friendly to buy our own so that we stop buying from uganda if uh, if if we can manage to sell the same crate of eggs at 200 shillings there will be no need of buying, importing eggs. If we manage to sell mananasi from Del Monte or other local farmers in Moranga at 30 shillings, there will be no need of importing from TZ or anywhere. Reason, mm -hmm. the prices are at par. But currently, Mkulima wa UG, to produce a bag of maize in Uganda, for example, you, you need like a 1,200 shillings. So if you sell at uh, 1500 mm -hmm. let's say if you sell at 1800 you already have made a profit of mm -hmm. 600 holding a several factors constant 600 out of 1800 mm -hmm. that is 33 percent profit mm -hmm. which is very good profit but now in kenya to produce a bag of maize ni around 2000 and I find a car is such a pack dog out on a user 2300 300 out of 2300 mm -hmm. That is uh, one over eight. That's like a uh, twelve percent profit. So now we can imagine when we get transport, border border it's a bit by here, nini, here Mahindi or anything else. Na kuna traffic pale. Mane no mingi kwa ibara bara bana. So the government should zero rate mm -hmm. most of the basic food production farm inputs, mm -hmm. so that farmers will access them at a cheaper cost. The government should combine the Ministry of Agriculture with Rural Development, mm -hmm. they can even start with counties where we produce a lot of uh, foodstuffs. Mm -hmm. So that those areas get good roads under the Ministry of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. Then uh, zero rating of those chemicals and farmers will produce a bag of maize at 900 shillings. Why should I buy from UG or import from TZ? Mm -hmm. And I'm not telling the president there from Uganda or TZ you are not importing. Mm -hmm. It's called free, free market. Mm. The prices will regulate themselves. All right. Uh, apparently, we are running out of time, but I would want us to uh, finish with maybe this one. Mm. He mentioned of uh, importing, he has mentioned of Pakistan rise in Kenya. Now, why are we importing things that we are producing here as a nation? How, when will, it, will we bring it to an end? And what do we need to do as a nation to ensure our farmers are able to produce? We are getting our own. Even after zero rating the products, what else can we do? Some of the policies that have, have, might have been missed in the formulation. All right. Uh, my thinking is uh, make imported products especially food, as expensive as possible. That gives the person who is selling local products at an advantage. For example, an apple from Egypt could cost you maybe 60 shillings. But maybe an apple from Limuro or wherever, it can be 20 shillings. So what will happen, we will encourage our own to eat our own produce. But you cannot blame the local farmer 
from uh, selling that same local apple at 70 shillings, like he has said, because of all those various factors, right? Mm -hmm. So the only way to encourage uh, that, that one, but, but also we need to think about purchasing power. You see, when you have unemployed individuals, how are they even able to even afford to buy the local product? But if we had good purchasing power, what, what happens? Even if you bring the imported here 200 shillings, but you know the, the, the moya rice, the pishori is better and it tastes better, I can be able to afford that and, 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 and boost the, the local, uh, local production. But all in all, we need to move from self-loath and self-hating. And we say, why don't we, like you say, zero input, uh, zero zero taxation on all in, uh, inputs of of of, of farm, of, of farm uh, uh, products that are good to use for production, and then once we produce surplus, mm -hmm. we can make money in our exports, right? Because m most likely we can produce quality rice such that we can overproduce. To the point now we are selling to people and because we are producing the like people say our tea is the best our coffee is the best right meaning our soils are good and very and very uh, full of good minerals isn't it why don't we take advantage of that because trust you me even other developed countries that's what they, that's the same thing they usually do towards us right they charge us very expensively for what they are selling to us so why can't kenya also market itself strategically internationally and um, uh, put put our farm produce out there to promote the local farmer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the only thing is that we allow ourselves to be bullied uh, by 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 international market. We allow ourselves to be bullied. I would say we as Africans always allow ourselves to be bullied. And I think it's a high time now we stand and say no, no more bullying. We produce the best. We we offer the best why you will buy at these prices because something else i realized the the international markets also affect how the 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 potato is going to cost in our country one way or another or even the tea mm -hmm. juicy i realized that a farmer is being paid 15 shillings a kilo for tea but when you go to the forex exchange it's at 215 shillings mm -hmm. so i was asking myself that farmer has done everything, has uh, labored, only for someone else to eat 200 shillings there at the foreign exchange. Also, we look at the foreign exchange. So when you look at the foreign exchange, how can the government come up with policies mm -hmm. to ensure that the foreign, foreign exchange is favorable to the farmer? True. And it cushions also the farmer mm -hmm. so that irrespective of whether the dollar is falling or rising, the farmer is not affected in one way or another. Okay. Uh, and, and, and until we go to that direction whereby we start believing in our own and start seeing the potential in our own mm -hmm. and start uh, putting up structures and policies to promote our own for the benefit of our own, then we still have a very long, 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 long way to go. Long way to go. And let's start also uh, marketing. Uh, you see, there is also poor marketing of, of local farmers' produce. Mm -hmm. When I go to the supermarket and I see a pair from South Africa, I want to associate myself with that pair. Instead of me associating with that pair mm -hmm. produced in Limuru and seeing that it's a very good, good product. So also, the local, we need to start marketing local uh, farm produce so that Kenyans can actually go for the Kenyan product before they even go for the Ugandan product irrespective whether the price is high or low but for once we start promoting our own and over time we'll have a lot of mass production mm -hmm. and even the cost the price will actually okay. go low maybe that's what maybe Uganda have done because far and foremost the, 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 the farmer in Uganda uh, before they even export to Kenyans mm -hmm. They've already eaten as many yeah. eggs right. in their country. Right. Uh, final words, mm. please. Now, if you want to borrow a bursary in Kenya, or you want any kind of help in Kenya, and you ask the careers or the profession of your parents mm -hmm. in Kenya, if you want to get it, you rate farmer, yeah. so that you look poor. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> unless you move from that aspect of thinking the Kenyan farmer is a poor person, mm -hmm. we shall not grow. Mm -hmm. And the government, the people, the, the officers, Mr. Mm -hmm. X, Mr. Y, Mrs. Z, Ms. Watt, and the Minister of Agriculture, mm -hmm. they should forget the policies gathering dust on the shelves, mm -hmm. research, come up with new policies mm -hmm. that will boost the agricultural production of this country, and 
the people, the senior officials in the Ministry of Agriculture mm -hmm. should support the president in achieving the big four agenda of food security. As Abitri said, nutritious mm -hmm. and sufficient that uh, the country will produce, be able to store with those PhD holders in post-harvest technologies and I believe uh, zero rating of agricultural farm inputs will help us sort the issue of food. And once we have enough food, uh, if uh, we get another pandemic like Corona, lockdown for 21 days, uh, we have enough food. After 21 days, everybody has been tested. People have been isolated. We treat them and life moves on after 21 days. To speak a 50, 10. Thank, Thank you. you. Your final words? Uh, my, my, my final words is that um, a hungry man is always an angry man. Mm -hmm. That's one. And if, if government wants economic sustainability in mm -hmm. the future, mm -hmm. even the cost of health has to go low for us to have economic growth. And food security is one aspect of bringing even the cost of healthcare lower. Mm -hmm. And uh, as much as we have different uh, ministries, I believe in what you call intersectoral partnership. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's not have Ministry of Agriculture independent, Ministry of Health independent, Ministry of Roads independent, but they should all be inter interdependent. Th that is the kind of mentality and attitude we should go towards. Mm -hmm. uh, last is that we need to also move from the mentality that when you go to do farming, you are a poor person. That should be killed like yesterday. Mm -hmm. We agree. From the king to the poor person, we, depend on we all need to eat. Mm -hmm. Hunger pangs cuts across everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's the high time we come up with, um, with projects and programs. The way we are saying many youths are unemployed. Why don't we convert most of these uh, semi-arid and, and arid lands into irrigation schemes and employ our youth in those, in, in those sectors? They'll, they'll produce more food, yes. They'll create employment, yes. And it's even sustainable in the long, in the long run, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and I'm very grateful to see youths in Wajil and Mandera moving from pastoralism to now actually domestication of plants and domestication of animals mm -hmm. which is improving the health in the wrong land and also when you improve your health in the wrong run what happens you reduce even your expenditure even in the household level it goes lower out of pocket expenditure already goes very low mm -hmm. so f for government if food is number one and there is actual sustainable food for each and every family mm -hmm. Then all these others, like security, people fighting. Why do people fight? Because a hungry man is an angry man. They will fight. Okay. There will be violence. People okay. will be falling uh, sick right now and then, right? So once food is sorted, I can guarantee you everything else starts falling into place. All right. Yeah. Thank you so Thanks. much, Beatrice, yeah. and Job, for coming and sharing your uh, ideas and opinions on how you feel our country should move forward in terms of food security and back home thank you so much for keeping us company and by the way have you heard of ajira program a web application i'll be speaking to you about that in a bit but for now we uh, finish what we have we had here she has been my guest beatrice cairo health researcher and job mugira he's a uh, Research, uh, research analyst, thank you so much for keeping us company. My name is Deleva Hillary. See you in a bit. And Sharon from Kiritiri, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs>